All right, now that we have some of that base set up out of the way, we can start with our site design. Now, in every single website you design, you should always start on paper. And I've got a little sketch here of the layout of this website and a few of the ideas I had when designing it on paper, but you also want to start on paper. It's an important part of the design process and to not just jump into Photoshop. There's a, a tendency to just jump right into Illustrator or Photoshop and just start making blocks. But I really encourage you to start on paper, force yourself to use a pencil, and it will help your designs and help the creativity process. So I've got that little sketch and this is kind of the layout that I've sketched out on my website and I've done kind of a somewhat standard website to help with uh, the instruction of this course. Now the first thing that you want to start to design, design in your site is some of the colors, the color scheme. And this is obviously something you can modify down the road, but you'll save yourself a little bit of time if you spend some time in research and figuring out the color scheme for your website ahead of time. Now there's a few great resources online to help you do that. And Adobe has packaged a few of those into Photoshop. And the first method I'm gonna show you is using Adobe Cooler. So if you're inside of Photoshop in CC or CS5 and above, I think has this actually built in, you can come to the window down to extensions and over to cooler, K-U-L-E-R, and that'll pop up the little cooler panel. I'm gonna tag this over inside of my dock here. Now Adobe Cooler is simply a, a color scheme designer website or tool. And they've got a mobile application for this cooler and they've got a website and they've got extensions built inside of Photoshop. But it's a way where you can create or search for color schemes. And all of their color schemes, you can see here, five base colors. And you can browse high, highly rated color schemes inside of here. You can search. So if I'm going to build a website, let's say, that's say, earth toned. Maybe I'm just going to come in here and say earth tone and do a search. And this will pull up a search of all the, the color schemes that have been tagged with earth tones. And you can see there's several color schemes here that people have created around earth tones. And you can rate these color schemes, of course. You can see some are five stars, three stars. Uh, the more powerful feature I believe inside of here is to be able to, the ability to create color schemes. So if you come into the create dialog box, this allows you to select common color scheme rules and be able to build your site around those. Now you'll notice the first rule here <clears throat> is analogous. And we're not going to get into a lot of color theory in this course, but analogous color schemes are color schemes that are adjacent to one another on a color wheel. So you can see here the base color is this kind of burnt orange color and then it fades into some light oranges and down into some reds and almost pinks. So this is a, an analogous color scheme. And if I grab this middle slider, I can drag this anywhere on the color wheel and you can see that all these colors update accordingly for this color scheme. You can also choose a monochromatic color scheme. Now monochromatic being that there's one hue and you either have a tint or a shade of that hue, a lighter, or basically you add white or you add black to that hue and you come up with a monochromatic color scheme. So this is an example of a monochromatic color scheme. I think it uh, works pretty well. There's the triad. You can see here in the triad color scheme, there's uh, basically it creates a triangle on the color wheel and the colors are in this triad system. So you can kind of drag that around and see the triad color scheme is in effect right there. You have your complementary colors, which are colors that are uh, that are opposite uh, one another on a color wheel. And you'll find complementary color schemes like this quite often in universities and sporting teams. You'll see brightly colored helmets and jerseys with almost these opposing colors because they usually have a lot of contrast. And uh, so you'll see quite often university logos and whatnot have these complementary color schemes. And there's obviously the compound one. You can kind of drag down through here and look at some of these on your own. Or you can do custom and you have the ability to drag these wherever you want. So whether you use this Adobe Cooler or uh, I'll just browse here to the website so you can see their web app that's for this as well. It's at cooler, K-U-L-E-R dot adobe dot com. And this will pull up essentially the same thing but in a much larger format here to where you can uh, create color schemes and drag these around. And you can see it's very similar to the, the little plugin inside of Photoshop. Um, underneath Explore, there's kind of a, a fun option in here where you can search and favorite, edit these color schemes and kind of remix them into your own. And under Create, um, you can actually assign RGB values 
or hex values to your base color. So if you know that you're working on a website that already has a theme, you may say, well, I'm gonna start with this base color here and then work your color scheme around there. Um, another website that may help you in creating color schemes is called colorschemedesigner.com. And this is a similar take on what Adobe Coolers is. And these guys, you can see this is, goes back clear to 2002. This is quite an old site, probably one of the first ones to build these color scheme designers on the web. But anyway, it's a similar idea. You can pick between complementary, triad, analogous color schemes. This kind of has a few fun options in here. For example, colorblind, you can see what this color scheme might look like for colorblind, and you can select that, and this is the colors that they would see. So kind of an interesting, but anyway, same idea here. You can export these color schemes as HTML and CSS, text, or even ACO files, which are Adobe Photoshop palette files. You can import those as swatches straight into Photoshop. So kind of some fun ideas for creating color schemes. If you download the Adobe color scheme app, it will actually, uh, on your mobile phone, you can actually take a picture of a scene or a, an object outside, a bird or something with pretty colors, and it'll pull out the color scheme from the picture you select. So. Uh, that's the method that I have used when I created the color scheme for this website. So I'll again pull that up to show you the color scheme that I'm starting out with. It's inside of the start file here. And uh, here's the color scheme that I'm going to be working with. So now I want to get this color scheme over into this document. Um, it's It could be as simple as opening up your color scheme inside of Cooler and taking a screenshot. I'll show you how to do that. That's actually the method that I did on a Mac is you can take a screenshot of this and just press Apple Shift 3 and that takes a screenshot of the entire screen or you can do Apple Shift 4 and drag a cursor around a certain section. So I can take a screenshot maybe just of this area and then I can come back to Photoshop and say File, Place and then choose that um, screenshot from my desktop. You can see there's the screenshot. I can place that directly into my composition and then I can set up my color swatches from this or whatnot. Now I'll show you another trick on how you can copy layers from one Photoshop document into another. So I've got open the WDC start file here and I need to get that color scheme into this new one I've designed. So I can right click this layer and say duplicate layer and this pulls up the duplicate layer box. And notice one of the options is destination and it will allow me to select any open Photoshop file as a destination. So I just simply select this and select the untitled one. That's the my name of my file up there. I haven't saved it yet and hit OK. That will copy this layer into this file. You can see now I've got my color scheme inside of here. So once we have our color scheme, we'll uh, set up our swatches and then we'll start to uh, frame out our design, which we will frame from the sketch we have. So let's set up the swatches. Now, in Photoshop, there's the color panel over here and the swatches panel. If you don't have yours, go to the window down to swatches and bring that up. So we're going to come over to the swatches and we're just going to add our colors as the last five swatches right here. So we're going to select the eyedropper tool over here. You can see the keyboard shortcut for that is I. So I press I. That gives me the eyedropper tool. And I'm just going to select this first color here, this darker brown, and then single click and hit OK. And that adds that swatch there. I'll select the next one, add it next to it, and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to simply add all of these colors inside of here, which will just allow me quick access to the colors throughout Photoshop. So now I've set up my five color swatches. I can turn off this color scheme. I'll take my guide layer, take the opacity way down, and now I'm ready to start wireframing. 